Hallo Leiden. Nee, hallo Leiden. Goed samen die Leiden. Zdravstvoe Leiden. Hallo Leiden. Bonjour Leiden. Hallo Leiden. Marhaba Leiden. Ciao Leiden. Hi, podai Leiden. Hello Leiden, I'm Zam Abasanova, uh, presenter of the brand new show called Hello Leiden as Lotusa TV. And our show is about stories, stories of people who are new to Leiden, what their life is about and what are they doing in Leiden right now. We have two guests at the show uh, currently, Lucy Bevan and Doris Fung. Welcome to our show. Uh, could you please shortly introduce yourself? Lucy, sure. maybe we, sh- we should start from you. Yeah, um, I'm Lucy, I'm 28 years old, and I work as a freelance translator. I, I'm based in Oosgeest, um, but I also lived in Leiden for a while. <laughs> Good question. Oh, yeah. um, well, we actually met um, in uh, Collegium Musicum. Yeah, that's right. Which is the Leiden uh, student choir and orchestra, but we're both in the choir. If you're if you're young and single and you're you know <laughs> you're looking for a partner, then you should definitely join the choir or the, the orchestra. Yeah. yeah. There's loads of nice people there. So. <laughs> and uh, uh, another place is the the Hofius, I think. Definitely. Uh, yeah. So in in Leiden, um, but also other cities in the Netherlands, you have these um, like courtyards, and we call them Hofius. So if you Google Maps Hofje, then you will find different Hofjes in, in Leiden. Very romantic. Those are very romantic yeah. spots to meet. Yeah. And then I would also say the Burgt is a lovely place to go with uh, on a date. Yeah, the Burgt mm-hmm. is also nice. Mm-hmm. It has a nice view over the city and it's uh, very romantic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Come on in. Thank you. What makes this house uh, a home for you? Um, memories of my family, memories of my former home in England, um, and uh, my partner obviously being here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've been living in Amsterdam, Delft and Leiden and now Oosgeest, but uh, Leiden is definitely one of the more beautiful cities of uh, of the Netherlands, yeah. Oh, definitely, with the canals and uh, the bridges and... Nice architecture, I'd say. Yeah, a cute little streets to walk, walk down. I definitely think that it helps that it's a, a university town, so there are lots and lots of international students uh, from different cultures. Yeah. I don't do any books, any literary translation. It's mainly for uh, large companies. Um, and I work with a lot of translation agencies who uh, outsource all of their work to freelancers like me um, with particular language combinations. In general, I've definitely been busier p- post-Brexit. Yeah. Likewise, it doesn't really matter where I am because I can, I mean, I can work anywhere. It would probably be the same types of customers. Um, this one was taken at my cousin's, cousin's wedding a couple of years ago and it's got, uh, well, my parents on it, my brother and my sister-in-law. And this one has uh, a golf and his three brothers on Yeah, it. those are my brothers. Yeah, so this one was uh, taken in, in Leiden, Leiden yeah. in the snow, I think in February. And we walked all the way from Leiden to Oosgeest and back again. Yeah. So I have a very controversial answer to this <laughs> question, which is that I don't really think there is a... Oh, I feel really awkward saying this. I don't really think there is much of a Dutch cuisine. Um, uh, friet and mayo... Chips and mayo is just not like a dish, really. You get that everywhere. Um, but I mean, I do have to say, I like the air to soup pea soup. Uh, I like cooked spots. 
Um, I'm a huge fan of pancakes. I mean, come on. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. What about you, Doris? Uh, I'm Doris, and I live here for five years already in the Netherlands. I live in Leiden for two years, and before that, I live in Amsterdam. Uh, I'm 40 years old. Yeah. Leiden University. I was uh, there as an English tour guide for one monumental day. Uh, it is very special that you, if you can get in, then you can really see all the history, the details, uh, why there is uh, different fonts there, what the windows, the, the grass like in the windows mean. So this is the, the first place. The second place uh, is a market. The Sunday market is very, uh, very lightened because you uh, just walk around. Now it is scattered a little bit further, but it is really like, oh, this is how people live here. Every Saturday, everyone grab their uh, shopping bag, go there to talk to the uh, fish, uh, fish uh, seller or buy bread, buy uh, vegetables. At, at the beginning, I think this is only uh, touristic things. But if I live here, yeah, my boyfriend and I went there every uh, Saturday. So, uh, and don't forget to eat the gibberling, so the deep fried fish, they are very tasty. And the third, place I will say is the bird. The bird, bird. So that is the fortress. You can see uh, a very big church there, like from the top. Um, it is very scenic view. It is like a fairy tale, like oh it's high up, it's very beautiful church there and the scenery there is really beautiful. I live in Leiden for two years. Before that I live in Amsterdam. Um, I like it. I start learning piano. I like the culture here, museum here, the weather, although it is quite bad today. <laughs> I think Leiden has a very rich history. Talk about the fortress, talk about 3 October, the siege of Leiden, it is a lot of story. The mayor found out well how he uh, protect Leiden, Leiden University. So these are all the culture, all the a lot of story that you can imagine what happened here in the past. Yeah, so here food is a bit difficult indeed, especially with a Dutch boyfriend that goes only potato and bread. Yeah, for me, uh, I still need some warm food for lunch or breakfast, so I will make my own noodles or rice at night. Uh, but good that my partner can uh, accommodate it quite well with me, so sometimes we can have a Vietnamese food, or we make our Cantonese food, or uh, Thai food, Indian food, etc. So that not too bad. It's just like I cannot take bread for for four days in a row for breakfast or and lunch. Yeah, that will be a bit too boring. It's only sandwich and and peanut butter and cheese. Mm. That part is really a. I need a a more variety, warm food. Ah, uh, I. Well, not, not uh, the good one is the herring. So I remember the first time I came, I eat it like that. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it tastes so good. Maybe it's also a little bit sushi feeling, like sashimi feeling. So it tastes so good. And I cannot find it in Hong Kong. Yeah, but then uh, last time when I came back, I bought one pack in the in Skiffle. They have a fresh one, but frozen. Then I share this with my friends and colleagues, and they also like it. Do your study. I mean study on the culture, how people uh, do things. For example, like uh, how quick people react to the uh, pandemic, for example, it may be different than in your country. Like for Asian, maybe we are super uh, careful, we, we wear masks already early. But here people may be more relaxed. So you need to understand this cultural difference, uh, eating habit, um, the, the, the way they work. They may be very direct when they tell you things or you did something wrong. Though they actually didn't mean that bad, they are just direct. So you need to learn the difference. You need to prepare yourself to expect this will happen. Great. So um, Lucy, you are from, um, from UK. What was your life like in there? So um, I grew up near London. Um, 
you know, just in a small town outside of London. Um, and we lived there for 20 years-ish, and then I went to university. <laughs> um, yeah, a um, standard uh, family life, really. One older brother. Um, what else do you want to know? <laughs> yeah, I will want to know a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Doris, what about you? What was your life like in Hong Kong? Um, li I was born and raised in Hong Kong. Uh, also a very typical life. But you know, in Hong Kong, it is a very busy life. So a typical studying, then you work, but the whole day is really busy, really work. Yeah, but here it's totally different world. <laughs> yeah, it's true. How did you end up in Leiden, in the Netherlands in general? Um, maybe we should start Lucy? So I studied modern languages in, at the University of Nottingham in England. And then um, uh, I first of all moved to Nijmegen for my first, uh, my first job at a small translation agency. Um, and then uh, after about 18 months, I uh, resigned from my job and came here to do my master's also in translation. And I've been in Leiden about three years now, three and a half years. And, uh, yeah, it feels like home. That's amazing. <laughs> How are you, Doris? Uh, for me, years ago, I feel in Hong Kong, the political reason that is not very stable and it is getting worse, that is not what I future myself to be there. Then I think of where I can go. And luckily, uh, I work in a Dutch company in Hong Kong. So I asked my boss, oh, uh, I have this idea, I want to relocate. Um, mm -hmm. Can you take me? And then I'm lucky one that they say yes. So here I am. At first, I settled down in Amsterdam. But then uh, I start dating and I find my love. And then uh, here I am in Leiden. And your love is Dutch, yes. right? <laughs> How is it going for you? Uh, quite well, I think. Uh, being with a Dutch, he is very direct. So if there's something wrong, we can just talk about it. Because in Asia, we usually hold, hold in ourselves. And uh, quite nice being with him. That's amazing. That's very familiar to me. <laughs> yeah, Lucy, yeah. Uh, you have a Dutch boyfriend too, right? Yeah, I also have a Dutch partner. And um, yeah, the, the English, I think, are famous for being very reserved about their feelings and... Uh, um, they do their best to avoid conflict, whereas the Dutch just really call a spade a spade and say it how it is. And uh, yeah, I think there are advantages to both. Um, yeah, it's, it's certainly refreshing. That's amazing. Um, how was your settling like in the Netherlands? Were there any culture shocks or you know things that surprised you or shocked you or you know it has been a positive experience? What has it been like for you since you have moved here? Um, so before I properly moved here, I did a short internship a um, couple of years before um, for several months and got to build up a network of friends. Um, so when I properly moved here, it wasn't too much of a shock. Mm. Um, and also, I, f I do, on balance, find the cultures relatively similar. Um, so I found actually I had settled in quite easily. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, the culture is a positive way, mostly, like 95% they are positive. Uh, the culture is of course totally different from what I had in Hong Kong mm -hmm. or the Asia area. Uh, but they are so positive, you have uh, so many new things for me, like history, uh, the way people, the the way people talk and work, uh, the food you are having, and so far so good. I like it so much. Uh, I am quite active to go out to learn about the culture here. Like mm. I have museum card for a few years. Amazing. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So quite positive. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, you said uh, you moved from Amsterdam to Leiden. What was the reason for that? I found my love. <laughs> <laughs> and also I think in uh, the first few years, Amsterdam is a good place for uh, expat, because mm -hmm. there are a lot of expat here, more English friendly as well. Uh, but then after a few years, you 
okay, you, you, you know what you want to do, you, you have your busy life, learn about the city, learn about the country, then uh, you can lay back a little bit, then you have a smaller area, more green area, more relaxed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can relate to that too. <laughs> Lucy, what about you? You moved um, to Leiden from Nijmegen, Correct. and then from Leiden to Schreefs. What was mm -hmm. the reason for that? For both moves? Yeah. Uh, so, um, in Nijmegen, um, I mean, I'd been in the job for a year and a half and uh, just decided I wanted to do something different. Um, I felt in order to really progress in um, the job I was doing, I needed a bit more um, academic experience maybe. So that's why I decided to do a master's. And um, I was also willing to move to wherever within the country. Mm -hmm. um, and um, with Leida being really in the center of the Randstad, um, that was also a big bonus of moving to the other side of the country. Um, and then the second move um, from Leida to Uskais, I've actually lived in uh, three or four different places in Leida. Um, but in the end, uh, unfortunately, there was a quite quite a nasty dispute with uh, the neighbours where I lived in the last place in uh, Leida, which was in the Koi area. Um, which just didn't really make me feel very safe in the area I was living anymore. Um, and so my partner and I decided to officially live together. That's amazing. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Um, and we found a nice place, um, quite affordable, uh, just outside of Leida in this case. It's a bit quieter. The neighbors are really friendly. Um, instantly felt good about it. So, yeah, just felt right. That's amazing. <laughs> um, Doris, what is keeping you in the Netherlands? Mm, quality of life mm -hmm. to compare to Hong Kong. This is uh, really like, this is the life I want to be. Like biking, enjoying the nature, maybe just simple to have a picnic in the park, you know, be with friends, and you have so many places to explore here. Mm. Like a museum, as I said, I like castle, so I just pick somewhere that probably no one goes there and then spend <laughs> a day there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sightseeing a lot, learning the culture, making local food as well. Amazing. Like I make the tumpush in the King's Day. Wow. Uh, yeah. A lot of things, I, I still think I still have a lot of Dutch things I can do here. That's great. So mm. is it safe to say that you are staying here forever? I, um, I think so. Yeah? I would say yes. Nice. What about you, Lucy? What are your plans for the Netherlands? Um, I mean, I never say never about going back to the UK, mm. which is one of the reasons why I, I don't think I will um, apply for Dutch citizenship. I'd have to give up my British nationality. I want to have the option of moving back, mm. but I don't have plans to currently. Um, and what's keeping me here? Um, here, my partner, but he's also open to living in England as well. Um, and just, I just have a nice life here. I enjoy it, and it really helps that it's geographically close to my family where I'm from. I mean, mm. a flight over to um, to London is what, 45 minutes. So in normal times, pre-pandemic, um, I was visiting probably sometimes once a month even, really frequently. So it just, the distance didn't feel that big of an issue. Yeah, understandable. Mm. Um, yeah. One question that every single Dutch has been asking me, uh, where is home? Where do you feel home? Is it <laughs> the Netherlands or is it where you come from? Do you want to go first? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Netherlands, for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I think the way you decide where is home, for mm -hmm. me, uh, when I first 
go to the airport, Skipple Airport, uh, as a citizen here, okay, I go to the airport, I feel strange because it's new. The second time, uh, I'm a small family. Mm. The third time, uh, I feel home, I know everywhere <laughs> already in the airport. I also know everywhere, this is where my home is. Mm. When you land, you see, ah, I'm home. Yeah, I think Netherlands is my That's home. Amazing. How about you, Lucy? It's a difficult question yeah. um, because I suppose, yeah, I have roots in lots of different places. And what does roots actually mean? Well, some kind of connection, I think. I mean, I was, I feel a strong connection to lots of places. I was born in the north of England and um, I have lots of happy memories of sort of staying with grandparents for weeks and weeks during the summer. Um, and then, but actually I grew up near London. It was a very nondescript town mm. I grew up in, but still yeah, we lived there for so long. Yeah, um, yeah. But I really do feel at home here. Um, I do also have a home with my parents and I know I always will. So, um, That's amazing. Thank you <laughs> for sharing. Um, in 1997, Hong Kong has left. You already mentioned the political situation back at home, so it will, you know, s slowly dive a bit deeper um, to what your experience been like. So in 1997, Hong Kong has left Britain. Um, what do you call that? Separation or independence? It, for sure, not independence. Mm -hmm. It is a separation. Uh, uh, it's very difficult to say. Like, yeah, Hong Kong is now uh, under control of China more. Mm -hmm. And it is so much more that I don't feel this is my home. This is not Hong Kong. This is not where I know. So it's very sad that I have this feeling that I have to live here. I still like the city. Mm -hmm. I still like the people. But I see no future there for me. So, Do you still have family in there? Of course. But now pandemic, I cannot go back. Mm. Uh, for you, it's really lucky. <laughs> I am very lucky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's going to be a very similar question to you as well, Lucy. Mm. So, just recently, UK has left EU. Do you think they consider it as an independence or as a separation? And what has it been like for you as a um, British citizen living in EU in the Netherlands? I think. That long before Brexit uh, happened, um, the majority of the UK population felt uh, a detachment from the rest of the EU anyway. And Brexit has only he heightened that. Mm. Um, of course, there is more of a separation. Um, um, and for me, as, as a British expat living here, practically not much has changed. Mm. Um, I have fewer voting rights, which does actually matter to me. <laughs> um, I have to have uh, a residence permanent permit now. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I already lived here for five years um, when Brexit uh, took effect, so I did um, have the luck to get a permanent one. Um, but to me, it's much more symbolic. It's being a European citizen is so mm. much part of my identity. Understandable. Um, so it's really mm, been difficult to, a difficult pill to swallow. Yeah. Uh, when we had a chat, you mentioned something really interesting, mm -hmm. um, that your family uh, has voted uh, for Brexit while you voted uh, against. Um, how did it make you feel, like, as, a, as someone who is living in the EU right mm. now? How did it make you feel? So my parents voted for Brexit. My older brother did not. Uh, mm -hmm. We're very much in agreement um, about that. But my, yeah, it's, it was, I was so, I was absolutely flawed when I found out that my parents had voted for Brexit 
because I just assumed all along that as they have a daughter living in the EU, that their first priority regarding Brexit would be to um, to want to safeguard my rights as an EU citizen. And in the end, that wasn't the case. Mm. Uh, that's really been the hardest part of of the Brexit ordeal, I would say. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, one last question to Doris. Um, just recently there has been a um, spur of um, Asian hate, um, mostly in US, and there has been a lot of response in EU uh, among the Asian community as well. Um, did you have something to do with uh, campaigning or sharing your thought about it, or did you strongly feel about you know what is going on? Mm. I didn't join any protest. I didn't voice out very vague. Mm -hmm. um, first, of course, I don't feel that much. So uh, there are some cases that I feel there are Asian racists mm. against me, like especially during Corona time. It exists, but not that. I don't feel strongly threatened by that. I don't need. I don't feel like well, I have to speak up that much. But mm. I I understand what they are doing, why they are doing. Yeah, because for me maybe the case is mild, slight, but for them maybe it is more. Uh, like damage mentally mm -hmm. for them, also feel threatened a bit more. But I do admit there are cases here, even in Leiden city. So, really interesting to hear. Okay. I can give you some cases. You yes, please do. So share. for example, in the early beginning, uh, Asians start wearing masks in the supermarket mm -hmm. much earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in a having a trolley, mm -hmm. and there is a lady, like jump into my sight. Saying in Dutch, the mask on your face looks really ridiculous. And then I'm a bit shocked, but of course, uh, a typical Asian that I will not, although if I speak a little bit Dutch, but I will not fight back. I thought, okay, okay, that's it. Okay, just keep going, doing. Mm -hmm. Or people shout at us saying, Corona, Corona. But then uh, keep, keep, don't, don't start a fight, right? Just, uh, mm -hmm. okay, uh, maybe they didn't know enough, okay, but I also don't want to start a fight move on. Mm. I'm more pos passive sign, but uh, I understand people want to make this uh, stronger, to make everyone more aware of that. Thank you for sharing. It, it, it must be a bit, um, yeah, uncomfortable yeah. to face a situation like that. Yeah. But also have to understand this is not, uh, not everyone in Leiden doing this, right? I'm yeah. talking about really, really small case. So look at the bigger picture. People are still very nice to me. So That is very nice. And that's it for today. Um, we will be here again Saturday, as every Saturday after that. Uh, so uh, follow us and uh, check us out on TV. Um, watch and share. We are on every possible social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, uh, and Instagram. Um, and if you are a foreigner um, living in Leiden and you have a story to share, please do get in touch with us at hellonleiden at slotelstad.nl. Thank you. <laughs>